Welcome to the Teapot Reads. My name is Sam. I'm the Teapot. This is what I'm currently reading and I'm so happy to see you today. Welcome back. So last April I did a five-star prediction video and I pulled off books from my shelves that I already had as well as went over some books coming out over the course of 2021 that I was really excited for and that I thought would be five stars and I really enjoyed doing that. I thought it was a lot of fun. And I also really enjoyed going back and reflecting on it. So I thought it'd be really cool to do another five star reflection video this year. I'm not pulling any books off of my shelves for this one. I'm just going to be talking about upcoming releases for 2022 that I think are gonna be five stars and talking about why I think they're gonna be five stars. I do, um, I do think I'll probably do another five star prediction video later this year as more releases are announced. Um, and as that happens, I will probably pull some books off my shelf to go over those that I think that are going to be five stars. But I want to do a little reflection on what I thought my five star predictions were going to be and uh, what lived up to it and what didn't and maybe what surprised me. But first, I want to go over the upcoming releases. I'm really excited for all of these and these aren't just ones I'm excited for. These are ones that I am excited for and I think are going to rock my world, are going to be five stars, are going to be new favorites. A lot of these are from authors I'm already very familiar with. Hi. Tank is here. Minus one. They're all authors I am familiar with already and love already, like favorite authors. And most of them are, well, I shouldn't say most of them, but several of them are within series that I already love and that I already loved. Like book one was five stars. So not necessarily surprising that I'm putting these on there, but that's okay. <laughs> it just means I'd be even more disappointed if they weren't good. Okay, first up, coming out on January 11th, and actually I think this is going to be posted after this book comes out, so it may actually be out right now. Um, we have To Paradise by Hanya Yanagihara. Oh, Hanya, you are whew, <laughs> a writer that moves me. I haven't read People in the Trees, but I read A Little Life in 2020 uh, Thanksgiving. I have a reading vlog up about it. Definitely check that out. But um, oh my god, that book messed me up. I mean, it messes up like everyone who reads it. It messed me up so bad. It is also my favorite book ever. Like it's the fate my favorite thing I've ever read. A hundred percent love this book to death. Um, I, I did get to it before it got like huge on TikTok, okay? Not to be a little bit of a hipster, but I'm really excited for To Paradise. I honestly didn't think Hanya Yanagihara was going to write another book after A Little Life like that. Like, how do you follow up that story? But this one sounds immense. This one sounds intricate. It's very much, it, it's very much giving me more literary vibes than a little life like a little life definitely literature and literary but to paradise from how i understand it is split into three parts and each part follows a different time period and a different character i don't know if they interweave within the parts but i think that is how it's set up so one of them is in 1893 uh new york in an alternate version of it then 1993 manhattan during the aids epidemic and then 2093 in a sort of it sounds somewhat dystopian, but not quite like near future dystopian. So those are three time periods. I guess it's connected somehow beyond that. I'm not, I'm not hundred percent sure. The descriptions are not super deep. They're just like very vague and I, I'm okay with that. I mean, it's probably just a hard novel to describe. A Little Life is a hard novel to describe. Like if someone asked me what it's about, I'd be like, it's about Jude, but that doesn't really tell you anything about the novel. So. I do get that and I don't mind. And we actually got them in at work already. They are embargoed, so it can't be sold. But I did treat myself and I read the first paragraph. I missed her writing so much and I didn't even realize it, but there was something so warm and wonderful and also very old. Like it felt very old in her writing and I'm excited to dive back into that. So I really do think those can be five stars. I also fully plan on doing a reading vlog for this. Probably going to be posting that early in the year. <laughs> um, probably 
January, February posting because I'm reading this immediately. As soon as, as soon as it comes out, I'm pretty much dropping everything else and I'm reading it immediately. Then on January 18th, I, no, okay. I'm not gonna say no one is talking about this book because I did hear about it online and I was like, holy, holy crap. Cassandra LaRose Clark is writing another fantasy novel. I was like, well, I have to, I have to. Um, and that is The Beholden. So if you've never had the pleasure of reading anything written by Cassandra Rose Clark, she is phenomenal. She is one of the best writers out there. Very much a hidden gem though. Her, ooh, I don't even remember the full title, but I think it's been called like The Pirate's Wish and The Pirate's Magic, something like that. They keep they keep changing the titles. I'll, I'll put a picture of that one up as well. I read the first two in this quartet years ago. Like I think it was free or cheap on Kindle and this was back when I had a Kindle and read on Kindle. So like high school, middle school, like it was, a long time ago it, it was it was one of the most surprising things I've ever read by how much I loved it and also one of the most amazing things I've ever read now I haven't read anything from her in a long time but I've always I've always wanted to read more of her stuff she's written several I think halo novels something like that like a, a part of an IP but I just I I don't I didn't know or was familiar enough with any of those IPs to really be interested in picking them up. The Beholden is a fantasy story. I don't know if it's the start of a series. I kind of hope it is because her writing is just delicious and amazing. It's very lively and very creative. Like you 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 quickly attracted to it. Anyway, I can't I cannot wait for this one. I definitely think this is going to be 5 stars just because of how much I love her writing and I also hope it does well for her because I really want to see her succeed as an author. She's seriously fantastic at writing and definitely no one talks about her but the beholden it's about two sisters they are orphaned i think at a fairly young age and to sort of get out of the poor situation they're in one of them casts a spell and makes a deal with a goddess and now five years have passed and they're both of them are having really good lives and i think separate lives and the goddess comes calling for her payment and it sets them on a quest and that's all I know and that's all I care to know. I'm very excited. I do know, I shouldn't say that's all I know because I do know one of the sisters is pregnant and I am very interested to see that on the page because, well, I feel like there definitely are stories out there or fantasy stories out there that feature mothers and feature pregnant women. I have never read one uh, like where that's been one of the protagonists. I'm really curious to see how this plays. I don't, that's not the reason I think it's gonna be five stars. It's just like a curiosity aspect of it. This is gonna surprise no one. This is coming out in February, I think mid-February. February 15th, this is coming out February 15th. This is a house of sky and breath. Yes, I keep saying it backwards. I keep saying breath and sky, but it's sky and breath. This is by Sarah J Mass. This is book two in the Crescent City series. I loved book one. Probably my favorite Sarah J Mass book. I, I think I can admit that now. I think I'm strong enough, brave enough. Book two, I, I think it picks up where it left off. The description also very vague. This is like urban fantasy, but like fantasy with an urban aspect. So it's almost like the reverse. So fantasy urban, no, that doesn't sound good, but you know, it's very much that vibe. I love it. Uh, book one was great. I am, I am nervous because I hated A Court of Silver Flames and that nearly ruined the Accords Orange and Roses series for me so I am a little worried that similarly poor decisions will be made in this book but hopefully not hopefully this one is not tainted by bad decisions like that one was and this one will hopefully be very good because I am predicting it five stars and if this one sucks um I'm gonna have to do some reckoning I think with myself this one, this one's gonna get a lot of hype. This comes out in March. This is Gallant by V.E. Schwab. This has been toted as Secret Garden meets Crimson Peak, which is super interesting and amazing sounding. And if you disagree, you're wrong. What it actually seems to be about is sort of a haunted house and a young woman who is part of the family that has been tied to this house. She, upon reaching the house for the first time, realizes there's a lot more like monsters and ghouls and ghosts and stuff going on in the house and I also think there might be a little attraction to the villain going on because there's a line in the description that's like will she fight 
the bad guy or will she join the bad guy? I'm just like, join, I hope. I don't even know the character, but I think that'd be a nice twist. <laughs> this book sounds good. I never, no, that's not true. I've, I've read The Archived by V.E. Schwab, which is one of her YA novels. Monsters of Verity did not super interest me. I do have them. I, I bought them recently. I was like, I should give them a try. But Gallant is the first YA novel of hers that I've been like, yes, I really, really want to read that. That sounds really good. I have a really great track record with V.E. Schwab. I loved Addie LaRue. I loved A Darker Shade of Magic. I loved um, the first villain's book. What, what's it called? Vicious. <laughs> I loved Vicious. I've never completed one of her series, but Gallant is a standalone. It's not a series, so that's okay. That's perfect for me. I have a hard time finishing her series for some reason. I, I couldn't tell you why, but Gallant, it sounds great. It also has just one of my favorite covers. Um, she always gets the best covers. I think she's spoiled with covers. But I really, I really, really enjoy the American cover on this one, which I don't normally say, but I really enjoy the American cover on this one. This is the first and only book on this list that is by an author I'm not familiar with. I'm not 100% if it's a debut. I think it is. This is A Far Wilder Magic by Alison Saft. I think, yes, this is also a March release. I think it comes out the same day as Gallant. I've talked about this book a little bit before in my exciting 2022 releases video. It's about a girl who wants a wish, sort of. So she enters into a magical hunt and um, the boy who she kind of drags along with her. She needs him, but I, I get the sense she's dragging him along, which I'm totally okay with. And it's just about her competing to get this wish. And I think the wish is to bring her mother back, but I'm not 100% sure on that. This just, this is 100% on my alley. It may not sound like it, but it is. There was a book I read a long time ago and I don't even remember what it was called, but it was a very similar setup. Like it's a competition for a wish and I loved that. And I do in general love magical competition stories. They're not the be all end all. There are definitely some that fall flat. I did not like The Night Circus, for instance. I did not like The Crown's Game for instance, but uh, I do like a lot of them. Caravel, Legendary, I liked both of those quite a bit. So I do like that subgenre of magical competition. And on a very personal note, there was a story that I was trying to write for a very long time that is different in a lot of ways from this story, but has enough similarities that I just find a lot of pleasure in actually seeing something similar on the page. It's a story that is not going to exist in the form I ever intended it to. I've kind of cannibalized it and took pieces and moved them where I wanted, but I don't know. I think, I think there's just this piece of like, I've wanted to read this story and here it is. So yeah, I think it's gonna be five stars. I'm not a big fan of IOP novels or intellectual property novels. I'm not sure if that's their official title. That's just what I've always thought of them as. But you know, books that are licensed by Disney or by Star Wars, or I guess Star Wars is Disney or Star Trek then. You know, novels that are like, here, write a book in this already created universe. I'm not a big fan of those. Not because I think they're bad or worth less than other novels, but because I'm happy with the original stories in pretty much all cases and I don't need more. I think that if, if well, I did pick up a Star Wars novel, Ronin. I haven't read it. That one interests me because it, it feels so separate from the Star Wars universe I'm familiar with. But other than that, I've never really picked any sort of IP novel up before. It just didn't interest me. This, this changes things. This is Bravely by Maggie Steve Otter. This comes out May 3rd. And this is a sequel to Brave. I I remember seeing Brave in the theater. I enjoyed it. I didn't love it. I enjoyed a lot of it, but I didn't love it. It's not a perfect, perfect movie by any means. But Maggie Stiefvater writing the official sequel, sign me up. This sounds awesome. This sounds amazing. I am a sucker for Maggie and her writing. Uh, Mr. Impossible was my favorite read of 2021. I love The Raven Cycle. I love The Dreamer Trilogy. I love, when I read Shiver and The Wolves of Mercy Falls, I loved it. They don't hold up, but I loved them at the time. I enjoyed the Scorpio races a lot. And I should actually reread that this year because it's been a while and I'm really, really vibing with that right now. Bravely, it just sounds great. 
from what I understand, Merida has a year to save her family from the wrath of a god who thinks that they and their kingdom have grown stale and stagnant. And I think that's interesting. I think that's a really interesting direction to take the characters on. According to the description, Merida has to go on three separate quests, which I'm really excited for because I would love to explore more of this world. I'm also really excited to explore more of the mythology of this world. I think that was one thing that the movie really just glossed over as important as it was and the magic was to the story. They were just like, okay. <laughs> um, so I'm excited. To see all of that extended. I will probably rewatch Brave right before this comes out to read it. I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to do a reading vlog for this one. I know I did for Mr. Impossible. This is a very different book from that, so I don't know. But I, yeah, I think it's going to be five stars. I mean, everything Maggie touches is pretty much five stars for me, so not, um, probably not swinging in the dark on this one. Coming out on the same day, y'all probably don't know how much I loved the Silver Arrow because I don't talk about it a lot but the sequel to the Silver Arrow called The Golden Swift by Lev Grossman is coming out this year I didn't even know there was a sequel until um late last year I was poking around and I was like oh my god there's a sequel The Silver Arrow is amazing I'm gonna tell you what that's about instead of telling you what The Golden Arrow is about because The Golden Arrow um just sounds like a, a typical-ish sequel <laughs> like to carrying the characters further like more of the same but in the best way so the silver arrow uh, kate receives a train from her uncle for her birthday and her and her brother go on the train and they take it on this crazy magical train ride it's, it's got like polar express vibes okay and in doing so they're picking up endangered animals and bringing them places all over the world. It's a novel that's about trains and about becoming confident, but also a novel about saving endangered animals and saving the planet and the fact that humans are messing the planet up and like having to relate to that. It's so good, okay? It's a middle grade book. It's perfect. I 100% recommend it. I actually listened to it on audiobook and I actually recommend it that way. I've never read it textually, but audiobook was phenomenal. I recommend it that way to everyone, but there's a sequel. I can't wait. I'm so excited. Oh my god, Silver Arrow was so good. I, I know Golden Swift is just gonna blow me away. One of my most surprising loves is Silver Arrow. Um, so yes, Golden Swift. I fully accept, I fully, fully expect this to be five stars, just based off book one. And finally on this list, this comes out in November, so this one's coming out very late. I feel like I've been waiting forever. This is Blood March by Tracy Dion. This is the sequel to Legendborn. I almost forgot the title. I loved Legendborn. This one was another really surprising read for me. I didn't expect to love it as much as I did, but my God, Legendborn is the best YA urban fantasy novel ever. Um, I speak no lies. I don't know what Blood March is about, except that it's going to follow up Legendborn. I don't really want to know more. I just want to read it and love it um that's it that that'll make me happy blood marked i guess i should give it a little description is about brie who after the death of her mother enrolls in a early college admissions program and uh well at this college discovers a secret society of people descended from king arthur and his knights and she joins them thinking that they had something to do with the death of her mother and is investigating and also maybe has a little bit of magic of her own it's great and the book was perfect i i don't know this is gonna have more selwyn in it i think i'm pretty sure so those are the books that so far i think are gonna be five stars <laughs> and tank has found his ball so if you hear him playing that's what's going on but i did also want to include a little bit of a reflection and a wrap up on books that i thought were gonna be five stars whether they were or not now i didn't read most of the books in that video because why would i have stuck to puns so yeah i i, I didn't read most of them but of the ones i did read Bride's Head Revisited was five stars. I was right. I really thought I was going to be more emotionally upset by this book. I wasn't, but I still loved it. I think the writing blew me away even more than I thought it would. It's very subtle, very beautiful, great novel. I've talked about this a lot. I've talked about it in like every video where I talk about like books I love. Bride's Head Revisited by Evelyn Waugh. I loved it. Definitely plan to read more of his novels this year. Hopefully at least two. I would like to get like two done a year because I would love to be able to complete his entire biography. No, 
his entire bibliography somewhat soonish. So I thought First Become Ashes by Game Sparrow was going to be five stars. And initially I did give it five stars, but I did a video where I talked about changing opinions and changing ratings on things. And in that video, I talked about why I'm changing my review of First Become Ashes. I didn't lower it too much. I think it was four or four and a half stars in the end. I still really liked it. I thought it was a great commentary, especially on the way that fantasy novels and fantasy protagonists are built, but it didn't have that same spark that Docile did. Docile is one of my favorite novels and First Become Ashes just wasn't quite up to the same caliber. Definitely achieving very different things, but I think a little drier in some ways, so I just wasn't as in love with it. I mentioned this already, Mr. Impossible, not only was it five stars like I predicted, but it was my favorite read of 2021. It was amazing, it was so good. Oh my goodness, um, I don't know why I forgot that this came out. I always keep forgetting that this came out. It was such a big deal and I use so much energy to like love this book. And that was Empire of the Vampire by Jake Kristoff. Five stars, it was amazing. I actually got to read an arc of it, which was amazing. What did my dog do? Blew my mind, it was so good, better than I even thought. I, I cannot, I cannot say enough how much I just want to live in the pages of this book forever. It might be gruesome and horrible, I want to live in it. So good, five stars. Loved Empire of Empire so much. And then a couple surprising five star reads. We've got one last stop by Casey McQuestion. I just didn't think this was going to be five stars just based on the fact that I did not love Red, White, and Royal Blue, but this book has such a warm, happy, cozy place in my heart. It was great, it was five stars, it was fantastic. Anyway, the wind blows, so it wasn't surprising I don't think that I gave it five stars. I think it was surprising why I gave it five stars. The character growth and the conversations in this book about mental health and about relationships were why I gave this five stars and I never would have guessed that's why, but that's why. <laughs> Small Favors by Erin and Craig. I've talked a lot about this book as well. I haven't really shut up about this book and I loved it. I am really surprised because I don't really read horror, but I gave this horror book five stars. It terrified me, but it was amazing. And finally, oh my God, Winter Song by S.J. Jones. Yeah, if I had read this when I was younger, I would have been so obsessed with this book and this aesthetic, and I would have like shaped all of my reading and even my like self a little bit around this book. <laughs> So maybe it's good that I didn't read it when I was younger, but I'm, I'm so mad that I waited so long. Winter Song was fantastic. Mm, five stars, <laughs> obviously. But uh, it was sitting on my shelf for the longest time and I just never picked it up. And then I finally picked it up during my eye injury and was like, this was amazing. This was amazing. Now I'm still in the midst of the sequel. It's not as amazing. I'm not hating it, but it's just, the things I loved about book one are not necessarily in book two. So no, it's okay. It's still good. It's just not my favorite. But that is it for me. If you liked this video, if you liked this content, and if you want to see more of me, definitely subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. And guys, we've hit 200. We actually hit 200 very early in the new year. And I know I was joking and I kept being like, for a Christmas present, give me 200 subscribers. But thank you so much. This is awesome. This means the world. I can't believe I'm not just shouting into the void. Um, people are listening. Hello, thank you for listening. I really, really, really appreciate that. This is where I leave you. If you're somewhere cold, I hope you're staying warm. If you're somewhere warm, I hope you're staying comfortable. And most of all, I hope you're reading a great book. I will see you guys next time. Bye.